Holy God, illumine these words read and proclaimed. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that we may hear what you have for us this day. Amen. Whew. That gospel lesson is quite a challenge for this morning. Who picked that one? Uh, Many, many would dodge these words and wait for Jesus to cool off. Jesus speaks of division in families, in households, in communities. It's easy to read these words about Jesus bringing fire to the earth and think of the cataclysmic nature of the world we are living in, the scorched earth, rising sea levels brought on by climate change, catastrophic wildfires exacerbated by rising temperatures, and drought bring devastation. Well, fire is the image that we have that brings devastation. But also, it is the fire that brings God's presence and the power to affect change amidst formidable resistance. It's no wonder that fire becomes symbolic also of judgment, because judgment is another way of speaking about how unrighteousness, idolatry, and injustice cannot coexist in God's presence. The fire Jesus wants to kindle is a fire of change, the fire of God's active presence in the world. No wonder Jesus is so eager to strike a match. Well, we know that in the Gospel writer of Luke, that G, from the Gospel writer of Luke, that Jesus yearns for the kingdom of God to break forth into the world in all of its fullness. The transformations of justice that Mary and Zechariah envisioned and sang about in the first couple chapters of the Gospel of Luke are also the things that Jesus wants to. Well, that means that oppression has to go, and that greed has to go, and idolatry has to go. The same for exploitation and dehumanization and any other evils that you can name that prevent the flourishing of all people and all things in creation. Well, Jesus reveals some of his intense desire here desire for the world's well-being. Of course, the world's well-being doesn't just spring into existence because everyone wants it to. First, you have to tell the truth. The truth must be told. That fire is, after all, a refining mechanism. That fire is about refining. And refining hurts especially for those of us who have a lot of impurities stuck to us. Okay. Professor Matt Skinner suggests that because we mistake those impurities for purity, and because we lie to ourselves that self-protection is a form of justice, we resist Jesus. That Jesus isn't against peace, Rather, he points out that his message of release and transformation is bound to be divisive. His words about fractured families may have spoken very poignantly to Luke's original audiences, who themselves might have included members that were estranged from each other because some committed to Jesus Christ, and then families fractured. Even with as much of devastation as individuals feel from out-of-control fires in our world, wildfires can bring new life. Wildfires can create conditions where habitat diversity is encouraged and helps plants adapt to novel climates. The fire that Jesus describes is costly but it also serves the purpose of life and love. Well, that same fire kindles within us. It kindles so that we can be light and love in the world. 
If you read a little further in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 13, Jesus teaches about repentance and the, assur the urgent circumstances in which humanity currently finds themselves. Where we find ourselves, standing at the threshold of our own mortality and the promised arrival of the kingdom. There is no time but the present to turn away from all that separates us from God and turn toward love and acceptance of a God who is generous beyond measure. Jesus also speaks of repentance as a changed mind. It is what happens when we look at ourselves and our world from God's perspective. According to God's commitment to justice, or God's broad-reaching shalom, or God's pledge to meet us in love and solidarity that we share with our neighbor. And over the last seven and a half years, I have served here with you at First Congregational Church. I have seen the refining fires in you, the fire that gets you involved in marches for issues of justice, for making signs and carrying them to the State House, demanding common sense gun reform, or standing on our own steps in 2018 when we cried out for children to be reunited with their parents after forced separation along the U.S. southern border. Or I have seen the refining fire in our youth and our volunteers who have served in West Franklinton community on week-long mission opportunities. They display the fire that kindles within them for justice and for action and for love. I was drawn to First Church eight years ago by the known commitment, your known commitment to social justice and witnessing to Jesus Christ in the community. I am so grateful for that opportunity to be involved with pressing issues of our community and represent First Church and speaking for change. I have seen you eagerly yearn for God's presence in the world and that you are the ones who can help make that visible through the mission and ministry of First Church. I have witnessed you embrace a new story of gratitude and generosity in these last seven years when it comes to identifying and talking about your core mission of who you want to be as a congregation. There is no room for scarcity when you have generosity to talk about. There are too many gifts that I hold with gratitude from so many of you. Too many memories made in service to God in Jesus Christ. For all of those, I am full of gratitude. And I have learned and grown as a pastor by being in ministry with all of you. And I thought of a few things that I will remember and cherish most. What a great honor it is to sing with such wonderfully talented singers, all of you in this congregation. Now, I will say that my singing wouldn't displace Jamie or Elizabeth from their positions as section leaders in the choir but I try to mostly stay on key when you made me sing the song Eucharist at communion. <laughs> Believe me, it is much more nerve wracking than I can adequately convey to you. <laughs> and when I preached about the stewardship of our lives a few years ago from a podcast called Death, Sex, and Money, many of you young and old, came up to me afterwards wanting to hear more about the sex part <laughs> than any of the other two. That was a delightful surprise. Tim, I'm going to have to pass that one over to you. I will remember you with fondly for the ways that you have nurtured my faith and for our family and encouraged us in our life together. For that, I am very grateful. The ending of my ministry among you comes with mixed emotions for many of you, as it is for me as well. 
You have showered me with text messages and emails and cards to express your well wishes and gratitude, and I am overwhelmed by your thoughtfulness. The ending of my ministry comes with certain responsibilities that I take very seriously. As I leave First Church, I stop serving as your pastor. I will not be available for pastoral care calls or texts. I will not visit you in the hospital when you are ill or when someone in your family is ill. And sadly, I won't be able to visit you when you bring a new life into this world, one of the great joys of my ministry. I'll be unavailable to officiate funerals or weddings or baptisms for a period of time. And in the age, in the weird age of social media, I have connected with many of you over Facebook. And during the last few years of the pandemic, it has been really, really helpful. Today, we need to make a mutual covenant with each other, that we'll take a break from each other for a while on that platform, up to a year, so that we can re-engage afterwards with new vision and excitement. We make this separation and I establish boundaries with the Association of Central Southeast Ohio and the Heartland Conference, also for you to be able to focus on the community that you are still a part of, so that in the letting go of the pastoral relationships you have with me, your hands and your heart can be open to embrace and love whatever God has in store for you here at First Church and whomever the church may call to lead you in the future in new and wonderful ways. Just as you have loved and embraced me, Jeff, Cami, my mom, Cindy, God will make space in your hearts to love again as you have loved us. That I will pray for you and pray for God's presence to rest in your hands that God may nurture and engage and inspire each one of you like the refining fire for the journey of faith you continue as a community. As we heard Scott read a few moments ago from the letter of Hebrews, it's that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us and those who are here today. Those who have come before, who have prayed and listened and discerned who God is calling you to be. And now, how you discern together as a community as to who God is calling you to be here and now and in the future. Those are guiding witnesses for you, encouraging you and inspiring you. With God in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, we are to run with perseverance, the race that is before us that we set aside every weight and every burden and every sin that keeps us from fully loving God for the divisive nature, the divisiveness of the nature of our beings. And we must strive to be one. For to be one together means honoring one's differences, appreciating one another's gifts, cherishing them for the fullness that they bring to community. And we look to Jesus, Christ, as author and perfecter of our faith, we grow together in love. We grow up in our maturity in Jesus Christ, and we build a community that is solid in the grace that comes from God. And that fire kindles within us. That fire is from God, striving to make all things new, empowering those for new ministry and new work in, and among those in the heart of the city and throughout the world. And so as I close, I will continue to pray for you and ask that you pray for us. I will pray for your families, for the staff and the leadership here at First Church, that through these next challenges set before you, that you rely on the steady presence of a God who has always been in always loved you and is empowering you for new life together in this place. Thanks be to God for our shared ministry together. Amen.